Here's something seriously problematic. God is good. He's probably bun my shirt, right? Probably a respectable thing to do. Okay. We'll pretend that you didn't see that. And here I am pretending as if that wasn't my intention to begin the video in a weird way. Welcome to the Late Show Show! All right. In this week's Torah portion, we learn about the para aduma, the red heifer, which is basically the purification procedure that cures, purifies one who is ritually impure, legally impure. Legal impurification is rectified by this legal right of purification. The speed has got to stop. There is another type of impurity that isn't a legal situation that isn't merely a ritual impurity. It is a spiritual impurity. Now, of course, the two are linked, but they're not exactly the same. Okay, what are you talking about? The spiritual impurity that I'm talking about is, well, the spiritual impurity that, unfortunately, is the status quo for the time being, because we are not living in a world where Mashiach is revealed to everyone, everywhere. It's up to us to reveal Mashiach in our own life on an individual level, so that on a collective level and on a global level, we, as in us people and God, can experience Mashiach in the most tangible sense. This will happen sooner than we all think, but be a part of it. Get in Mashiach mode. Sounds like an ad, but I, well, I guess that's what this is. I am, I am begging you, and I'm not asking for your credit card information. Please get in Mashiach mode, increasing in the joy in your life, the love for another person, the love for your fellow people. Do another act of goodness, kindness. Do another mitzvah, and study more Torah. This is Mashiach mode. Live in the mindset of redemption of Geula, and this will happen immediately. Wait, wait, wait. I failed to explain something. What is the correlation between not seeing Mashiach and us being spiritually impure? Well, let's put it this way. Mitzvahs, the commandments that are in the Torah, God's manual for our life, is life. As it says in Deuteronomy, Chapter 4, verse 4. And all of you today who are cleaving to God are all alive. Uh, I, I, I messed up that translation. I just wanted to be cool and say Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 4. What wasn't cool? I know. It's like the opposite of cool. But yeah, anyways, speaking of the opposite of cool, sin is the opposite of life. A dead body, the opposite of life is a source of ritual impurity. So to recap, doing what the source of life tells you to do is life, is purity. And not doing that or going against that, God forbid, is the opposite of life, an impurity. And of course, should we, God forbid, choose to do a deed which is the opposite of life, we don't just drop because then what choice would we have to choose life? like? There, then there's no choice. Now, the fact that we can even make a choice between good and evil, between following God and not, is mind-boggling. How can we reject the source of our life? Why is it even possible that we can go against the Creator, the constant Creator, who creates constantly, recreates, animates, vivifies heaven and earth and everything in it, into existence at every moment, including me and you. Why? How? Can I go against my own source of life, the source of life, and still live? I mean, how, how does that even make any sense? Here's the problem. God is good. Yes, that's a problem. Because since God is so good, God wants to give us the greatest good. But the greatest good can't be given. It needs to be deserved. We need to work for it. That way we can appreciate the actual goodness of it. Otherwise it's cheap. Otherwise it's, it's free. It can't be given. 
it's not the greatest. So in order for us to deserve this greatest good, Hashem, the source of life, literally hides behind His creation, within nature, within the world. This way we actually weigh our options when we have the opportunity to do a mitzvah or, God forbid, not do the mitzvah or, or an actual avera. Otherwise, if we would see the source of life and everything, it, it wouldn't be, it, we wouldn't weigh our options. Like what? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, by now we deserve Hashem to be revealed in the world. And any moment now we will see that this whole world is Hashem's garden, is Hashem's home, where Hashem is exposed. We deserve this. But right now, at least as of the making of this video, it hasn't happened in the most total and complete sense yet. So let us grab this literal last moment when we can still make the choice and make the choice. So Hashem sees we're already in Mashiach mode.